call the Honourable Nanaia Mahuta. I'm a bit concerned about the, uh, the way this debate is going based on the uh, contribution of the previous member. The member fails to admit that when Labour was last in gov government, we recognised that poverty wasn't an easy, uh, easy issue to, to address, and, the, and it was systemic. But there were a whole range of other initiatives that Labour addressed to help alleviate some of the biggest pressures facing vulnerable families. Let's look at some of them. Income-related rentals. We ensured that in the state housing sector that those family that, families that were on low incomes, most vulnerable, had access to income-related rentals, paying no more than 25% in some, in some instances. Made a huge difference in communities, and we certainly didn't sell houses off. Right. The other thing that we did was that we introduced 20 hours free ECE so that parents had access to quality early childhood education and the guarantee of a qualified early childhood teacher. Now if that's not investing in the future I don't know but we also reinstated the training incentive allowance and I campaigned in 1996 when National was in government and they did away with it and Labour promised it would bring it back because they knew that by investing in women, by ensuring that they had pathways back into education, that was going to help lift opportunities for the most vulnerable families and get them on a pathway to sustainable employment. Mr Speaker, Labor also introduced Working for Families, and we ensured that those people who are on the pathway to sustainable employment could also get the type of support that would guarantee a lift up and a hand up. Not a handout. We know the importance of getting people into employment. And we had in our region alone, mine, myself and, and uh, Sue Moroni, in our region of the Waikato, at its lowest, unemployment was down to 3.2 per cent at its lowest. And that is where the rubber hits the road for us because we know what the benefits of a contribution of Labour's contribution in the last nine years of a, our government looked like for families in need, Mr Speaker. Statistics do matter and the numbers tell a very serious truth. Here's where the rubber hits the road uh, for me. 97,000 Māori aged 18 to 64 uh, years uh, and their household whānau are welfare reliant. Right now, right now, 26% of Māori adults are welfare reliant. And that's a shame because in the last quarter there's been no movement right to this minute. Today in question time we challenge the government because Māori unemployment currently sits at 12.9% and that's a shame because when we look at this bill, support for children in hardship bill which looks at work provisions, we cannot deny that the government has failed to address the issue of job creation because unemployment is going up certainly for Māori. The member previous, uh, the previous speaker spoke about uh, being more uh, conscious of uh, household income. Well, here's where the rubber hits the road for Māori. The median Māori household income is $28,000, 15% lower than any other group. So there is not a heck of a lot of disposable income, and if this bill is going to help those most vulnerable, I know where the great majority of the whānau that he's talking about uh, are, and it's in many of the communities that we represent. More importantly, and the member, Sue Moroni, made that very significant point, more children are living in poverty. But let's look at the numbers. Around 33% of Māori are living in poverty, around about 215,000 people, 94,000 of which are Māori. It's unbelievable. And when, when uh, when the government talks about material hardship, I think it's a convenient term. It cannot get away from the fact that there are a number of families in our communities who want work. So when they look at the 20 hours work, uh, work provision in this bill, where are the jobs? And for those mothers who have children who want to work, where are the jobs? And if they don't have access to a car and they have to travel 30 kilometres away on public transport to get that 20 hour job, what childcare provisions are available in their small town to get that job? And then we've got to ask ourselves, is this the best way in and of itself to alleviate poverty? The simple answer is no, it's something. But in and of itself, it is not the best way. There are far too many things happening which negate the benefits that the government are promoting around the support for children in hardship bill. The, the, the insecurity of work 
for a lot of vulnerable families make them more prone to, uh, to the whim of, of their em employer. And this is really difficult. I come up with this a lot. In fact, I, vis uh, I visited a school and I talked to a mother who had four children. And she is working, and she's very proud of the fact uh, that she is working, but she doesn't consider it a stable job. She believes that at any minute, her employer could just tell her to walk. She's got four mouths to feed. Her and her husband combined, their combined income don't earn more than, doesn't earn more, uh, them more than $40,000 a year. Now, um, they, don't, they consider themselves proud people who will work, but that kind of environment makes it very difficult. Mr Speaker, this bill, uh, as I said, has considered, uh, made a number of considerations, and as the Minister has pointed to, a number of uh, uh, changes to the, to the definition of part-time work. Uh, and I can only say that in reading it, and I'm not a member of the Select Committee, I have to ask a serious question. Is this a part of a systemic approach to address the issues of poverty? Because the chair of the select committee himself said, these are big issues. There's no single answer. And if there's no single answer, we cannot debate this issue in isolation of all the other aspects of poverty that impact on how families are feeling uh, the struggle. And the struggle is real today. The struggle is real today. Mr Speaker, I listened uh, to, I, I read with interest um, some of the submissions, but also uh, some of the comments, and it would seem to me that by investing in other aspects of those raising children, vulnerable children, uh, there could be other ways to improve uh, circumstances. Again, I'd make comment with the training incentive allowance. What greater investment could be done then to ensure that women raising children had access to the training incentive allowance to lift their skills, lift their opportunities. They've got a cabinet minister who's had this very direct experience, yet that is not a reality for a number of families who the government purports to support. The other thing is the value of volunteer contribution. Again, I come across a lot of young mums who try and help out at the local pohanga or the local ECE, and they believe that by contributing there and getting their confidence up, uh, being able to learn the parenting skills uh, from uh, that type of environment is about contributing not only to that community of children, but also, more importantly, fundamentally, to their own raising of their child. These are the types of unseen investments that, were, that the, the country or even the government could recognise make an equal, satisfactory contribution to the raising of children who can reach their potential, not just simply a $25 increase. Yes, it's a start, but is it everything? No, it isn't. Will Labor support it? Yes, we will, recognising that the issues around poverty are systemic. This is not a blame game, but this is a very serious challenge if the government really believes in what it is saying to set targets to eliminate and reduce child poverty now. Don't wait. Don't wait and then just you know, sit there glibly and, and blame uh, Labour when we were last in government. Let's do something about it. Let's, across Parliament, agree that targets are necessary. Let's look at the range of policies that will, that will alleviate poverty so that we're not debating this issue in another three years' time. We're actually tracking on how policies are fundamentally reducing poverty and fundamentally improving the lives of young people. That's what the, the children's policy under Labour attempts to do. Look at the issue systemically, try to ensure that we can track progress. Mr Speaker, uh, this is a second reading. No doubt the committee stages will be robust. I look forward to ensuring that we will have a fruitful debate around the broader issues of poverty and where, in context, this bill actually will or will not make a difference. Kia ora. Very good. I call Mac